the first question, right? right. Your gay haircut. That's unbelievable. Eh? Mm. Quite a shock, really. So I thought he was a gay hairdresser. <laughs> I thought, what's she doing with this? <laughs> it was, uh, it was ridiculously high with the spikes. Uh, when he, when he first started, it was quite fashionable, and he had he used to go to Superdrug and get his wee highlighting kits. Fashion changed over ten years, and Liam's haircut just kind of, I just pretty much stayed, stayed the same. Ever stayed, stayed as it was. So, yeah, it's never really, it's never got any better. But fingers crossed for the wedding, he's got a half decent haircut. When we were younger as well, he um, he fell off the underpass at uh, the house next to us, and I don't really remember it very well because I was only like three or four. But I, like the story is legendary. It's told all the time. So he fell off the underpass and it was like everyone came and was like to my dad, oh he fell off, mum was night shift. So the neighbour had to come and bath me and put me in bed because they were going in the ambulance. So like Liam was like knocked out, completely passed out. And they were in the ambulance and my dad was with them. And then uh, he says that he was just like all groggy and he just sort of like came round and he was like, dad. And my dad was like, what is it? And he was like, how's my hair? What? Well, he's turned out fine. Got a sensible haircut now. It's actually getting a little bit better now. He had it, he's had it cut and he's tried to copy my haircut. So he's, he has, <laughs> it is looking a wee bit more respectable. Doesn't it look so much like a gay hairdresser now? No. I do enjoy a really terrible haircut. I was always a little bit younger, so he would always be a tiny little bit PC about the things he would tell me, but uh, with Alana, he'd always come in and be like, oh, she's like the coolest girl ever. She's nothing like all the other girls I've dated because they were all stupid. <laughs> uh, I worked with Alana when I worked in Levi's, we were like 17. She fancied me straight away, obviously. Well, even before we started going out, um, I remember we were sitting late one, I think it was a Thursday night, and we were working late, and uh, he said, just out of the blue, he said to me, I'm going to marry you one day. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, no, I am, I'm going to marry you one day. We weren't even going out or anything. Um, and it turns out his mum had, uh, Heard on the news that morning that something like 80% of people marry somebody that they meet at work, and this was him. Like he thought he was going to marry me, so I suppose it's turned out to be right. Um, but uh, yeah, Levi's has got a lot to answer for. <laughs> they were working together. Alana was at uni and had a part-time job at Levi's, and Liam worked in Levi's, and I knew they were getting a bit a bit closer, and then eventually he came to visit and he was the most awkward, awkward boy. Seriously, he was painfully awkward. Within about half an hour of arriving um, into my mum and dad's house, um, he managed to get himself so nervous um, about being there that um, I had to take him back across to his own house um, so that he could go to the toilet. Literally the most boring person, but in a great way ever. Like she knows everything that needs to happen. But she is the clumsiest person ever. Like she is actual ridiculous. We were sitting eating lunch, and she always used to have unbelievable lunches. Like everybody else had like Greg's or a pot noodle or something like that. Not Alana. She would always come in with like an amazing perk sandwich or something, or like leftover Chinese because they loved the Chinese, and she was eating a chicken curry one time and we were sitting and she had like a white hoodie on and it was just like this me and here and she's eating it and the whole time she's like oh so what are you up to doing up doing up and the whole time her hair is just like in the curry and she's like trying to obviously flirt in that and she's like fucking her hair back and like oh, are you alright and it's literally this curry just going like all over her back all over the front and I was just like and I mean it was everywhere. I'm talking like she was like shoo, shoo, and it's like going on the wall and it was going on the back of her head and it was going out in there and you're just sitting there like eating your steak bake like. <laughs> what, what was your first reaction when you found out it was getting married? I was I am still a wee bit annoyed I'm just coming round to the idea now. I couldn't even I couldn't even go to the uh, engagement party. <laughs> I was so disappointed that I'm getting married. I don't like the idea of any of my friends growing up. Again it's that thing where it's everybody thinks about, well oh, let's go to Paris and we'll do like a a love trail and you find all this crap and you think, oh, it's too much pressure. Like, it's literally too much pressure, I'm not doing that. So I'd been thinking for ages what I could do, because I knew that she wouldn't want just, like, a text or write right up to you I get married. I knew she wouldn't appreciate that and it would have to be something a wee bit more thing. So I sat there, emptied the house and made, like, a really nice meal in that and put candles everywhere and had, like, a wee blanket in that out for us and made us a nice meal. Alana doesn't like, she doesn't drink. So I had like the champagne flute things out and we're drinking iron brew at them. 
and then she doesn't eat dessert or that either. So my plan was, I'll ask her, do you want a dessert? And she'll be like, no, I didn't eat dessert. And she'll be angry about it because she's always like that. And I was like, right, fine. And then that would be when I'd be like, ooh, what about this? And like pull out or whatever. But we're eating dinner, going back to the curry story, Alana spills her dinner, like on a hangway. So we've been out with each other for 10 years. Sorry, Stevie. So she just took her top off, right? <laughs> so, so she's just sitting eating her dinner in her bra. And I'm like, any other day this is fine, but the day, like, I, I don't know what to, how do you bring up the conversation to be like, go just put your top back on, please just put your top back on so that I can ask you to marry me, so I was just sitting there like, oh my god, this was like, I think we had bruschetta or something to start with, so it was like starter and I'm sitting there like, where the hell do we go now, like how do I do this? So I was like, ah, oh, you're not cold, you're not cold, like, just put your top back on, I think it's a bit cold or whatever, or go into the kitchen and get it, so eventually she did, she went to the kitchen to get something and put her top back on, I was like, right, fine, I'll do it, and then, obviously, I'm a confident person, and was like, oh, I'll have this amazing speech, and out of the two years, I'm the total sappy romantic one, I was like, I'll definitely do something amazing here, and then, absolute arse collapsed, like, oh my god, I don't know what to say, and I was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. and I was like, stand up, and then I was kneeling down, and I was like, oh my god, and I was trying to get the hang of hitting it in the table, hang like that, and I was like, trying to look at her, hold her hand and get the hang, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. Alana's a saint, because Alana doesn't complain about Liam, and Liam is, <laughs> I would kill him, <laughs> he's a nightmare. <laughs> Everything that, that's wrong in one of us balances it, I'm funny as anything, she's dull. I think Liam takes a bit of a back seat and just lets Alana go for it with whatever she wants but I'm pretty sure that he's uh, fairly vocal about it if uh, anything doesn't go uh, his way. Yeah. His best quality is he always seems to know what I'm thinking. I just do what Alana tells me, but she doesn't have to tell me. Like it's like a subconscious, like I just picked up and then she's like, I had to pick that anyway. I'm like, alright, that's fine. <laughs> she just drilled it into me for like 10 years. That's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. I'm like, alright, fine. No, I just tore the line. Meet Liam Corbett and Alana Walker from Bathgate in West Lothian. In 2011, they got engaged and decided to celebrate by splashing out £3,000 on a Caribbean cruise. When we were on holiday a few years ago um, in the Caribbean, um, our luggage just didn't arrive the entire holiday. But their troubles were far from over. We had to then find a hotel, we had to find somewhere to stay because this time it was now almost one in the morning. We couldn't get anywhere and it become very apparent that we're going to have to sleep in the airport. Luckily my mum and dad were on the same cruise with us, so we had to borrow like some of their clothing. So I, I'm about the same size as my mum, so it was fine to borrow. Um, and obviously you're borrowing your mum's underwear, that's completely fine, you know, but Liam had to borrow my dad's. My dad wears wife fronts so um, that was pretty unpleasant for Liam. Um, I had to wear my dad's wife fronts for the entire holiday and wash them in the sink every night and dry them with a the hair dryer and stuff like that. It would be back at register office or something like that. It would be like me, Alana, and I'd maybe invite a couple of more people just to, just the bulk numbers. Uh, a little bit yeah. of egg bees gig. I think that's that's got in the middle in the middle of Pink Castle. Aye, Pink Castle. Yeah. I'm still convinced these bands going to come out and start playing in this wedding. A disaster. Noisy. Aye. Rock bands playing in the background. Football chanting. <laughs> but his beloved hearts. Although he's secretly a, a Rangers fan. Um, he admitted to me that in the golf course one day. <laughs> it's been planned in two halves, and that's exactly where you're at just now. Like, Alana's organised, sorted, and that. He's a panic merchant, angry about everything that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> It's supposed to be such a special thing and a personal thing that people get bogged down in. Oh, who's did your wedding cake and how much was your wedding dress and how much was the venue and this and you think, who cares? Like you're cutting a you're cut, cutting a wedding cake with a sword. Like what relevance does that have to you? Like oh, the first time she came round to my house, I, I sliced her some hovis with a claymore. Like <laughs> it doesn't happen. George. George. After George Albert. Oh no. William. Absolutely says that he despises it and it's always thing. He used to like physically strangle me if I called him William when we were children. He would go absolutely mental. It's got to be William, something. It has to be some form of William because I've been stuck with it my whole life and definitely my child is getting stuck with the William tag. When he was born, I said, he's going to call him William. And he says, no, I'm going to call him Liam. He says, that's fine. Okay, he says, that's 
short for William. So we went to register and I registered him as William. He says, I thought we'd agreed, Liam says, you can call him what you want, but on the birth certificate, his name will be William. <laughs> Ten years time, what does their relationship look like? Well, he'll still be trying to finish painting the fence. That's a certainty. 